Okay, as I continue with my buck stitching tutorial, I'll talk a little bit about what I've got here. I'm making a ranger style tooled belt and it's going to be buck stitched. Um, actually, I spent at least a day tooling this belt. Uh, I'll give you a little close up here. Kind of go down through there. This is a um, oak leaf pattern without the acorns and uh, here's the end pieces here that I just put decorative cut marks on them with a double border that I beveled on each side. The awl I use for buck stitching is a buck stitching awl and the overall length is uh, it's uh, just under seven and a half inches and the blade is just under um, three and a half so the rest of it would be the handle length there. Let's see if I can give you a better look at that. This is a, what you would call a vintage leather tool. It's been in the family a long time. I'm sure if you comb the online auctions you will be able to find one or it would be possible to grind that shape and then buff it uh, on a cotton buffing wheel, but you could grind a diamond shape with um, actually maybe even a screwdriver and use the handle. Um, but that's maybe an idea that you can use. There's my divider, C.S. Osborne, that what I do is I, I do a mock-up to figure out how close to the edge I want my uh, buck stitching. Uh, the bottom holes there, they're a quarter of an inch in and they're five sixteenths apart. I just felt like that was too far in towards the tooling, so I've settled on uh, three sixteenths. So I will scribe or mark a line on, let's see if I can move down here. I'll set these dividers at three sixteenths and just lightly scribe a line down through there and then I'll come back reset my uh, dividers to uh, 5 sixteenths and hand mark holes um, all the way around and I'll probably start right here on the end and uh, I'll stop just for a minute and I'll do that and then I'll come back okay you can see where I lightly scribe my line 3 sixteenths of an inch in from the border and then I came in there and marked those holes um, I set my calipers at 5 sixteenths and just um, come down through there and mark those spaces the next thing I want to show you is my uh, stitch horse could be called a saddler's clamp but uh, I'll give you a view of that at this time this is what I call a stitching horse you can set on it, there's the device I use for tightening the jaws here. And I clamp um, whatever I'm lacing. For example, this piece here, I put my foot on that clamp and clamp that in and that holds that while I do my hand sewing or buck stitching. Um, this is uh, a stitching horse that's been in the uh, family for a long time and uh, it's got my dad's initials on it there. It's seen a lot of use and there's still a lot of use left in this this stitching horse. Went to the library the other day and just happened to open up a book and um, the picture there with a device similar to this called it a saddler's clamp. Um, that'd kind of give you an idea of what what this tool looks like. And I'll take a look down at the bottom just in case you want to make one of these. So I'll clamp the belt in there where I want to start. And on this belt, I'm going to start right here at the end. A lot of time I, I'll start at the other end but for this demonstration I'll start right here on the pointed end. I've got my buck stitching all 
and I'll sit in here and it's very important that you just kind of just work that rather than just forcing your tool in um, it's likely to tear the material and not be good so I'll give you a close-up view of how to uh, punch your holes see what I do is I'm applying pressure and I'm working that and that uh, actually kind of cuts a diamond shaped hole there I'll go ahead and do the second one what you can do is you can punch four or five holes and then lace those up and then move move your belt and just move right along so I'll give you a close-up look of what what it looks like to punch a hole with the butts buck stitching all see here's the three holes that I've already got punched then I set the tip right in my mark there and I work my buck stitching all just like that applying pressure It'd be good to practice on a practice piece before you do the actual uh, belt or piece or whatever you're doing to give you an idea of um, the buck stitching I'll go ahead and get started I've got the tip of the buck stitch lace that I prepared it's sharpened a uh, little pointer here if that's a little bit too limber and you would like to stiffen that up you can take some uh, five minute epoxy and work that on there and that will uh, set up and be real stiff and it's just kind of like a needle I do that sometimes get it going here once I get going I can really roll with it I've got a pair of flat nose pliers here I like to use to to pull the lace through just like that the time I pull that through just a few times the lace really works down so that's the reason it's good to have a template like I had over there on my hook on my bench and now this is our first buck stitch lace right here okay I'll get my flat nose pliers and I like that because it doesn't really damage the string there okay pull that up and there you go there's a buck stitch on a belt like this uh, it's not unusual to splice your lace uh, three or four times actually and you just kind of need to work out a technique where it, it looks kind of neat on the back backside once I get my belt buck stitched I'll take it over to my um, maybe my tooling bench and I'll tap these stitches down and then make them lay down nice uh, and flat this is what I would call kind of crunchy anyway uh, it's got some uh, stand-up appeal look to it thanks for taking your time to watch this video video tutorial on buck stitching belts and if you liked it I'd appreciate a thumbs up and uh, I'd like for you to subscribe to my channel thank you very much